In the last video, we were showing the wiring harness modifications for the LS swap on the 91 shop truck. Uh, a problem I had in making that video was that I didn't want to make it too long, I didn't want to make it too short. I was either going to leave out too much or include so much detail that people would get bored and didn't want to watch it. So I tried to strike a balance between the two. What I found was that there were a number of small details that I did leave out that people have asked about, so I wanted to make something uh, that would kind of fill in the gaps on those wires. Suddenly we had the harness on the table, we're stripping out wires, we're taping it up. Next thing you know, it's on the engine and I'm showing you how it runs. Okay, there's a few steps in between, but the majority of that is quite accurate. The, there's only three wires that are needed to make it run. And my intent in doing the video was not precisely to show you every single aspect of each wire and where it went and everything, but the fact that what needed to be done in the process of preparing the harness for your application. For everybody, it's gonna be a little different. Maybe you've got an automatic rather than a manual, a drive-by cable rather than drive-by wire, uh, no AC, there, there's a variety of things that can be very different from your application than what I'm doing. But for my specific application, that's what I was doing to it. I wanted to make a video to fill in the gaps. I wanna show you where I put each of those wires and what I did to make the gauges work. It's a total of 10 things. So let's see if we can do this in 10 minutes. Hang with me. Okay, let's start with the first wire, the most important one, the red wire. The red wire on my 91 from the computer I connected right here, okay? Now, the battery is a totally separate thing. I'm just going with the, the three main wires that come off of the PCM over here to make it run, or your relay control, which would be your red for your power, which I connected right here. The reason I connected it there, on the OBS, the battery uh, connects directly to the starter, there's another wire that runs from this location right here to the alternator. That's my hot. That's why I chose that uh, stub out for my power. Next, the pink wire for key on power. When I strip back the harness back over here, uh, there's a cluster that uh, right here that comes out of the right here that comes out of the bottom of the uh, dashboard over here where the fuse box is on the inside of the truck. Uh, when I opened it up, there was a pink wire that went to this second stub. That pink wire I cut, and from there I ran, in this case my wire looks black, only because I ran out of pink wire, but I connected my key on power to this pink wire, which uh, goes directly to the fuse box within the truck. Third wire, which was fuel pump. Again, I didn't have enough gray wire. I had extra red, so I used that. It went to this stub out in the center. And the reason why is this is what has typically been uh, the stub out on this year model for the fuel pump relay. So that's why the fuel pump went here. So to, the short version, red wire I connected here for power. Pink was coming directly out of the firewall from the fuse box that would have come over to this second stub out. Third was the fuel pump. Fuel pump went to this third stub right here. Okay, now let's look at uh, some of the other wires that would make all my gauges work. Uh, or well, for one thing, the, the TCC. In this case, I don't have a need for that because I have a manual transmission. If I did have a TCC or an automatic transmission, then I would need to find a wire in the system that is hot originally and when you depress the brake pedal or no power. So I would have to do some searching to find that, but with the help of my schematics, I could do it. So let's go to VSS, your speedometer. For the VSS, the plug-in connection is at the tail shaft of your transmission, whether it's manual or automatic. You need wiring for both on this. And when I say both, I mean OBS computer and the, the new computer. And the reason why is your LSPCM needs to know the engine speed and how fast you're going and, and other parameters. The truck needs to know it, or the, the OBS needs to know it so that your speedometer will work. So I found the wires that came up to the back of this harness, right back here, the exact same wires, and spliced them in here. That takes care of speedometer. 
for my MIL or my check engine light. That's what this, oh, there's another wire here, right here. It's a brown wire. And I double checked it by pulling my gauge cluster and I noticed that on the gauges when looking at it in the upper right hand corner, the check engine light is the second uh, item from the right upper corner. I put my uh, circuit tester in there and touched this wire with my audible continuity tester. It was positive, plugged it in, or uh, cut the wire and then spliced in the MIL from the Ellis uh, harness into that wire right there. So that makes my check engine light work. Tachometer. On your OBS wiring, there is a white wire that goes to your coil. There's also a spade connector coming off of that same harness. Whichever one you use, it doesn't matter. That's where I tie in my tack at. It's a white wire. The fuel. Your fuel is not related to the wiring harness for the LS. It is in the body harness. This is why it's very, very important, and I stress this in, in other videos, try not to cut anything on your OBS wiring because you will need all of your grounds to make everything work. So keep your grounds and make sure they're grounded well, and your fuel gauge should continue to work. The volts are your battery. This is something that is in your harness here. The wire that, there's two plugs. There's a plug that goes to the alternator, uh, in the LS harness, and it plugs right in. The wire that connects to the back of the alternator to give it power runs right over here to your uh, to your power uh, leads right here. And the reason is, on the Suburban, for example, the donor, the positive wire that comes off the battery uh, runs over here to next to the alternator, down and under, over to the starter. There's a little box here, and if you open that up, all it is is a wire coming off that main power to give uh, power to the alternator. In this case, I simply used the wire that was already here for the OBS to power my alternator. You can use it, you can do it either way, but that's the way I chose to do it. Temperature probe, I'm sorry, temperature sensor. Uh, if you are in this case, I'm using a three-wire sensor. It's for like a 99 Camaro V8. Uh, the two wires that are in your LS harness, uh, the original sensor is a two-wire harness. So by connecting those two wires to the appropriate two wires on your pinout for the sensor, it will function because the LS needs to know your temperature. For your gauge to work, that third wire coming off of here needs to tie in to the wire off of your dash. And again, you can uh, trace that pin out off of the back of the dash that I pulled out and I located the wire that was in this harness as well that this runs underneath the steering column and enters right over here uh, to the right of your power brake booster. And that will make my temperature work properly. Oil pressure. My oil pressure did not change. I didn't use uh, the LS, the, in fact, the oil pressure for the OBS is in the OBS body harness. So I am still using the OBS oil pressure sensor and I used a, an adapter to adapt the OBS sensor to the LS block. The engine, the, the, the LS computer does not care where my oil pressure comes from. I need oil pressure on my dash. It's already in the wiring. The gauge, the sensor already works. It's just a matter of simply adapting it to this block with, with a simple adapter that was like seven or eight dollars. So that's all I did to make it work. Now, some of these wires are still laying on top because I haven't routed them yet, haven't decided how I'm going to do that. Uh, there were other things I was wiring as well, and I will make a separate video for that. I'm also going to cover, uh, well, the fact that I am going to have to put electric fans in this. I will cover the electric fan installation and how to wire that up in the relays. I will cover also the cruise control, how to find the wires and hook all that up. The drive-by wire, the connections that were different that I had to cut and splice in here to make that work. Uh, air conditioning, I'll show you the wires I used for that. And the last but not least, and uh, uh, one I found pretty interesting, were the battery cables. 
I got new custom battery cables made and your grounds are really important. I will cover all that in the future, but for right now, I just wanted to do a quick video to say, hey, here's where all the wires went that I connected. Everything else was simply a connection on the motor. And this, the only one that's not connected at the moment is my MAF. And that goes my cold air intake, which I have yet to install. Uh, everything else was simply a matter of connecting to the component that was still here. And then once you get over to this side, I mounted my, my PCM down here, uh, down below the battery. My uh, relay that I made with the uh, four 15 amp fuses and the dual relays, main relay and uh, the other relay for the fuel pump uh, based off of lt1swap.com is right here. Um, and the rest of the wiring, I need to just kind of finish it up, tape it up, and make it look a little better. But in general, it's all there and it all is functional at this point to the best of my knowledge. We're still working on putting the rest of this together. I need to put the radiator in, the electric fans, get the cold air. Uh, I'm gonna reposition this for about the fourth time. And then we should be able to start working on the exhaust and then we can fire it up. The only reason we're not running it now for more than about 10 to 15 seconds is because it will throw a trouble code because the engine realizes that there is no coolant in it and I don't want to run it any longer than necessary with no coolant and actually no exhaust. I hope that answers some of your questions with a little bit more detail. Uh, I can always ask questions. I get back to you as quick as I can. That is how I wired it up. Can it be done another way? Parts of it, sure, it can. Uh, I heavily endorse getting a schematic for your vehicle. That way you can choose where you want to attach things uh, and not everybody is, a, is the same. So I hope this helps you out, fills in a few of the, the gaps there of information that you may have been lacking from the last video. Got a question? Just, just ask. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Appreciate a thumbs up.